say we're going to make a box from this board and others. Here's another piece of wood I have. Well, for instance, we're going to make a, make a box like that, maybe as part of a drawer. Well, you've got a corner. It's got to go together here. How could you do that? I know, we could, we could nail it together. That would work. And there are lots of other complicated things we could do, but let's start with basics. Now, if we did that, if we nailed that together from, from this face, you know, we just nailed it in, that would work, but it would have a problem. Here's the problem. No matter which way we looked at this piece of wood, we're either going to have this end showing, and you know in traditional work, showing the end grain was frowned upon. Or, we could turn it around like so, you don't see the end grain, but then you would see the nails or screws. And if you use this piece of wood to make a drawer for a cabinet or something like that, that's not going to do. No, we need some other way to put it together. So, I want to show you a, a way of, of joining, joining perfections to make a useful structure, a way to do things. Later on, we'll do things like dovetailing and all that, but right now we're going to just house this. We're going to, to make a rabbit joint, just a way to, to drop it together so we can fasten it. Now, this is actually quite a simple process. We're not going to get too worried about it. I just have to gather a couple of tools, so I'll gather my tools together and I'll show you just how to go through this really simple but also useful process. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a modification to this board. We're just going to cut a little notch across the end of the board for our piece of perfection to drop down into. It's just a very simple rabbit joint. doesn't get much simpler than that, but it's also useful. Now, first step in a rabbit joint is marking it out. Well, I'm just going to take this board, we put the thickness as so, just going to mark the inside. I've taken my knife and just made a little mark where the thickness of the board came, and I'll square it across. Put my square to the mark, I'm just going to cut it a little deeper. You see the knife line. Why not use a pencil line? We could do that. We could mark it with a pencil. But the reason for using the knife is it leaves a nice sharp corner and it gives us something to use to gauge our tools. With a pencil, you can cut a little on the line, a little off the line. It's not as accurate. So, I'm just going to square around the sides a little bit. Now that's where the board's going in. That's the thickness. There's one more dimension we need. That is, how deep are we going to make this notch? Well, we could get tricky, we could do some serious measuring and that, but nah, we don't need to do that. Instead, we'll just make it something to suit ourselves. Now, the easiest way to do that is with our trusty marking gauge. And we'll set it, eh, Now the marking gauge has a little point. We've used it before and you'll need marking gauges. You can go out and spend money and buy them. You should just make your own. So I'm just going to gauge around the end. Now 
Now I'm going to use a pencil to darken this up just to make it uh, easier to see. So there we have it. This is the piece of wood we want to remove. And when that's removed, this board will sit right down in there. Now to remove that, the easiest way is to take the board to my little cutting board. Now I'm going to take my knife. This is one of the reasons I scored the cut deeply. I'm going to take my knife and angle it toward the waist side. You can see what I've done. I've just taken a little sliver out of that piece of wood. It's left a little trench. That trench is going to make it very easy because what I can do now is just put that in my cutting board, take my trusty saw, in this case I'm going to use a, a back saw. It's called a back saw because it has a heavy metal back on the back of the blade. That keeps the blade nice and straight and in tension. And I can take that saw blade you can get a look at this, what happens is, I'll show it to you, the saw blade will just drop right down into that notch and you wind up with just a, a very clear and clean shoulder. So I'm just going to drop it down in, start gently. I've, I've taken the saw and I've cut right down to my gauge line. Now we just got to get rid of this little bit of wood. Now, the way I'm going to do it, just for demonstration, you can do it flat on the bench top, it doesn't matter. I'm going to clamp it in my vise. Take the chisel, the mallet. Now, I won't put it right on the line. I'll set back because I'm not sure how this will split. You chip it out. Then, working across the grain. right down the line. My board drops right in. Now, you can see the advantage of this. It's not really very much stronger than just nailing it together. But now we could put our boards together like so and if you just want to make a quick drawer or a quick box, we could then nail or screw through the side. Come through the side, into the thicker board, and then from the front, you don't see nails, you don't see screws, you have a nice finished surface. That's it, a simple rabbit joint, and that's the beginning of cabinet making. Okay.